Hi YouTube family and friends, this is hometown to homestead gal gardener, Sue speaking. Uh, today I am going to show you a little video of making a washcloth with a stitch that is new to me and uh, some yarn that I got recently at the Hirschner's 1, 2, 3 sale. Um, I'm always ready for a good bargain. So let's get started. Okay, this is just some of the yarny goodness all over my table. First thing I got was Willow Guppy. These were all a dollar a ball. I was so excited. Willow Guppy. And here's 100% Draylon. You can see the label pretty good there. Not too shabby. These were yarns that I'd never tried before. And I have more colors that I was using for projects that I've already started. Here's Willow Fawn. Rayon from Bamboo and Acrylic. Some of these yarns in other shades I've already picked up and started working on a, sh a sweater from the most current crafts magazine, which I'm not going to show you how I was making that because it's someone else's pattern, but I'll show you the finished object when I'm done. This is nice and soft, so it's making a really pretty sweater. I also picked up some of this Willow Posy. These are not too bad for a dollar a ball. This is an acrylic wool blend. A little thinner than what I'm used to working with, but I'm sure I can find some real fun projects with those. And this was interesting. I kind of started looking for black when Jen from Cinnamon Stitches was talking black, about black cotton yarn. I'd really never seen black cotton yarn before, and I hopped across this Willow Sudsy. And it is a cotton polyester blend. Ooh, let me get that in frame here. And I've got a bunch of different colors of that. And then this crazy fun stuff is Red Heart Sparkle. There's a lot of it. I got five balls. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. They have this little hang tag on each ball. Let's see. Let me get a good look at how much is on there. And then this is the inside of the tag. That gives you ideas, oops, ideas of what to do with this crazy stuff. This one, they just wrapped it around a star form. And there's the deets. Not sure what I'm going to do yet, but I'll let you know when I do. So that's just kind of some fun stuff. Anyway, what I'm here for today, I'm going to do a little tutorial on this new to me stitch. And I'm going to make yet another dishcloth. I'm going to turn the camera around here. These are go flying. Oops. Adjustments. Okay, I think we're in good shape here. We're going to use this Willow Sudsy yarn that I've got sitting here. I'm going to use this black shade, which is called Blackberry. And I'm going to use this pink shade, which is called Sorbet. And these are, there's lots of other colors. This is just what I decided to use today. Cut the 
the ends off so I can access my yarn. These are very, very heavy, dense balls, too. I mean, it's the first time I've ever used these. I don't know how far these are going to go. How many dishcloths I could get. Dishcloths are about the only thing that I personally do with these cotton yarns like this. Where's that end? Is it stuck in there? Yeah, there's a little yarn burst. Lovely. Okay, I'm not going to make you wait for that. Somewhere in there, there's an end. Both ends got tangled up in each other. Whee! Wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and wrapping so it's not such a big mess. Tuck it under. I'll pull that one from the center. Anyway, we're going to start with a slip knot. Put it on my hook. And I'm going to do one, two, three chains, insert hook in the very first chain next to the knot, and pull up, yarn over and pull through two. And I'm going to insert hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. This is a foundation single crochet row. So that's, this counts as one, two, three. Four. Five, come on. Six. Seven, eight, nine, oops, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, Splitting a little bit. Fifteen, sixteen. I'm using an H hook, by the way. Seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, I'm slipping around all over the place. 24 and 25. Okay. You can make these longer if you like. I am just doing 25. And then we're going to chain two. 
And this is the new to me stitch. It's called the extended single crochet. I'm finding that I am doing a foundation row instead of chain more often when I make my projects lately. I just like the feel of it better. So what you do is you insert, okay, we, I chained two, that will take the place of the first stitch, and then in the next stitch, you're going to go under both loops just as you normally would for a piece, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over and pull through two. That's the extended single crochet. I had never seen that before until I was working on this sweater. And it might be, have been around for a long time. I just personally didn't know it. Pull some more yarn out. Insert hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Insert hook. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Imagine doing this for a whole sweater. It's creating a pretty dense fabric. this kitchen cotton before and it is splitting on me like there's no tomorrow. I'm not sure that there's a way to keep that from happening. to just do this all the way back to the other end of the row. And you can do this with whatever kitchen cotton you want. You don't have to use this willow sudsy. But these, this is what I got to try and so Wondering if maybe this might do better with a more pointy hook. I have a few of those somewhere in my vast hook collection. It's about the same height as if you were doing a. Okay, that didn't go through there. A um, stitch, a half double crochet stitch. It's about the same height when you are looking at it in the fabric because you're adding that extra little loop right there. There are literally scads of different kitchen cottons that you could be using for this. I am using two different shades of solids. You could use a solid and a variegated. That could be fun. You can just do it all in one color. This is really giving me a hard time. I'm 
almost to the end here. And on the end, you just insert your hook at the top of that stitch. Now, I'm not going to cut this off. We're going to do this in a carryover style. So I'm going to pull in the pink and find my end that I've made a mess out of. Give it some tail to weave in. I'm going to pull a loop through there and pull this one down very taut. So that becomes your loop left at the end of the row. I'm going to chain two. That's the first counts as the first stitch. I'm going to go in here and do the stitches the same as you did with the black. Black is always harder to see. Don't ask me why. It sucks up those light rays. You can see that. I'm going to go all the way across here. So I'm going to do a row forward and a row backwards of the pink. And then I will switch over and carry over the black for a row forward and a mm -hmm. row for back of the black. And I'm going to just continue that so that I have a nice blackberry and sorbet striped dishcloth. Black and bright pinks always look fun and festive together. I'm going to do the black and the orange for some fall. I've got yellow and orange for some fall. So I think I'm going to play with these colors. I also have one navy. It is so dark navy, it's all, I had a hard time telling it from the black at first. In the comments, you can leave me a comment of what your favorite kitchen cotton is and why. Let me know whether you think one is superior to another. I don't know if I'm just having so much trouble with this because I'm doing it, trying to do it in front of the camera, or which is always fun straddling the camera for my setup. I just have it on a little tripod. If it really is this difficult to do, this fight me a little bit, or maybe it's because I just switched from using a different kind of yarn, and the feel always feels a little funny when you switch sometimes. That very well could be it. Let's not just blame it on the yarn right away. Did I miss a stitch? Yeah. Missed a loop. Gotta be careful not to miss your loops. This will make a fairly dense dishcloth. I love these cloth dishcloths. You can use them as cloths in your bathroom. You can use them for whatever you want to use a washcloth for. Okay, come on, get in there. At the top of that chain too. I've got to count that stitch. Right at the end of the row, chain two. One, two. So there's that row, and then we're going to come over to this stitch and work our way back to the end of the row. And like I said, you can make these bigger. Doesn't matter the count you use. Make these real big in a rectangular shape and make yourself a 
placemat. I think dishcloths are a fun way to try out new stitches. In which the work that you've done into trying them out as actually becomes a purposeful item so it doesn't just go to waste or have to be torn out oops missed that one get back over there I think next to my crochet hook, sometimes my fingernails are one of my most useful items while crocheting. You can have to flick a loop up onto your hook. Excuse me, I have itchy eyeballs today. Mr. Gardner and myself just have horrible allergies right now. Puffy eyeballs. They look like somebody's smacked me in the eye. Which is not the case. Almost to the end of this row. There's the last extended single crochet stitch, and then we will go to the top of that chain two. Okay, so that's the end of the pink section. We're going to drop the pink thread and excuse me. I'm going to drop the pink thread, pick up the black, yarn over and pull through, and then pull the pink taut. So it's just a carryover on the end. So just pull that through taut. And the black then becomes the loop and you chain two turn the work and begin again with that extended single crochet so you're doing a row forward and a row back of each color until you get it to the size the length that you want and then I am if you want to put whatever favorite border you want around the cloth you may have a favorite. This one in particular, I am just going to do a simple single crochet of which will be crocheted over the tops of these carryovers into the stitch there and hide all of this messiness, but it'll be over the tops of those carryovers so that they're not sticking out or loose anywhere. And when I get to the end of this, I'm going to bring you back and show you my finished project. Okay, here I am at the end of the cloth and it was a little easier to work on it when I wasn't straddling the tripod. And I'm just working over the tops of those carryovers. I opted to do a half double crochet instead of a single crochet, just a little bit more substantial to finish these off. And in each of the corners, I have worked three stitches, three half double crochets. There's already one there. I'll do one more and 
excuse the noise. My family is doing things for me. Sometimes it's a little harder to make a video when everybody's home like they are these days. So now I'm just going to snip that off, pull that out, get my yarn needle threaded with this tail. stitches here and bury that tail underneath there all the other tails I've just crocheted over the top of so it keeps it real simple time going back the other direction and I'll just trim off this excess and voila cute little striped cotton crocheted wash rag I like it in the stripes. So, what other color combinations? I have black and orange. I have green. I can do, uh, let's see, yellow and black. Little bumblebee action going there. I've got some navy that would be good with the yellow. I could do navy and orange. I know that's some kind of a team colors. But it's got a got nice, good strong feel to it. I like it better after now that I've had it had it finished than when I was first starting to work on it. But anyway, I hope you've liked enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, subscribe, don't forget to ring the little bell for upcoming videos. I do videos on crochet, some cooking, some things that are going on around our little farmhouse and just some vlog chats. And I hope to see you back on my page again in the future. This is Sue at Hometown to Homestead Gal Gardener. Have a blessed day.